Hey guys, welcome back. This is Naresh. So today we will learn one interesting topic and uh, I know that everyone is waiting for this topic from very long and I think now it's the right time to talk about this. So today we will learn about the framework, how to create a Selenium framework from scratch using a page object model. Okay, so before we go ahead, let's discuss what is page object model is. Okay, so what happened that whenever we are working on any website, our website is divided into different pages. So if I show you, uh, okay, so let's go to Facebook. Okay, so let's assume this is our website, facebook.com, and we are working on this. You will see that in this website, this is a login page, right? And once I log in, it gives me a home page. And uh, if I want to sign up, you know, I can sign up on the login page itself, but sometime if you click on sign up, it gives you a different page of the sign up page. Okay, so our website is divided into different pages and the way we create our classes and test are on the basis of this pattern only. Okay, and there is an advantage for that because if we follow this pattern, then it is very easy to maintain our test cases and we can also go ahead and reuse our test, uh, test classes which we have written already. So how do we do that? Uh, I have open MS Paint uh, in front of me. Assume that this is your application. Okay, so in that application, there is two pages. One is a login page and another is the home page. Okay, so these are two pages. So if you want, I can write it here. Login page. And here I can write again. Home page. Okay, so what these uh, pages contain. So in Selenium, we create two classes. So I'm just making you understand how do we write any kind of a framework. Okay, and let me just draw here something. So assume this is one package. Okay. And under this package, I have this pages. So first is home page and this is my login page. All right. And this package name is page class. All right. We call this package as page class. So basically in Selenium, we create a package called page class. And in that page class, okay. In that we are creating two classes called login page and home page. But what these login page and home page contains, okay. So what happened that if you know on any other website, we have some elements, okay. And we have to find the locators of all these elements so that we can work. So on these pages, first of all, we keep the elements. So I will just write it here. Okay. So we will keep locators here. Okay. And these locators are also called object repository or the OR. So in this login page, I will keep all the locators which are available on this page. All right. This is the first thing. And the second thing, what I can do here, because it's a class, it can have a constructor, right? It can have constructor and what else this class can contain. It can have some action methods. What action methods are? Okay. Assume that, you know, this is a class and there are certain actions which we can do. What actions we can do? We can log in. This is the first action. So here we can create one method called login. All right. And what else? Uh, I can fill this form, right? Then I can create a method fill sign up form all right so these are the actions which i can do on this login page still you will see i have not created any test cases here i am just pure writing my web page under that i am giving a locator and a method in a similar way it would be in the home page also okay so when we are doing and when we are writing the code, we may feel that there are some common code which I need to write in each and every method or in each and every page. So what I can do, I can put all these common code at some place. Okay. So let's say there is a base class. Okay. So there is a base class for that. 
all right so what we will do we will use our java concept of inheritance so we will extend this base class so all these pages will extend the base class and whatever the common things which we can think we can keep it under this base class okay after this there is a one more package which needed to be created okay and in that also we have to create a login page test so here a little difference is we will give the name as login page test okay so that I can know that you know it's my test class page name and in the similar way we can write home page test okay it's home page test all right so I have a login page and I have a home page here all right okay and now we will see that how we can create a test and before that let me show you one more thing so let me just move it down okay so it might possible you know this login page and home page test also have some common methods so I will write those common methods on the base class and I will extend this base class also okay and in this what else can be written in the base class okay so for example if you know in selenium we have to set up the browser and we have to give certain methods like page timeout and implicit weight and delete cookies so we can give here for example you know if I want to set the system properties I can do from here in the base class okay because I don't want to do it again and again so I can just give here all right there is a method for system properties then maybe you know a method to delete all the cookies okay and there can be a method to open the URL so these are all the things I can give on the base class uh, in which and base class will be extended by the login page test and this login page test was this will contain so let me just write down that also okay so assume that uh, there are certain methods uh, wait so assume that you know there are certain methods which my login page test contain and you know in test ng we have to give at the rate test and here I'm just writing a pseudocode for example in login page test I have two tests okay so I can write uh, here public test one okay I have to write certain code here and public test 2 I can write certain code here okay and what I need to do for example uh, in the test one I need to check if I am getting an error if I type an incorrect password okay so I can you know write some name here like in instead of test one I can type incorrect password during login okay let me just expand this okay incorrect password during login and here I can give something like successful login so if you see that both of these methods belong to login class okay but here it is for the incorrect password here for the successful login so what I need to do because I am working in the login page test so I will create an object of the login page so I will give something like here login login equal to new login okay or login page sorry because my class name is login page and here also login page and this will also be login page all right and once I declare my login page I can go ahead and use the object and call different methods for example there's a method called login here right so I can you know uh, I can call this method method dot login and suppose if you know it's unsuccessful it gives me some boolean value so it gives me a uh, flag like true or false correct so I, if you see that you know I am calling this page object and this page object I am calling its method login 
So what it will do, all the logic has been written into login. So I don't have to worry about the logic when I'm writing the test. I just need to instantiate the object and I just need to call the method. And it will return me one flag whether the login was successful or not. Okay, and here I can assert that assert dot assert true. You know, I can give my condition like flag. Okay, if I'm expecting false, I can type false. If I'm expecting true, I can type true. So this is the way we have written the first test case and this is the way you write a second test case. So basically when you're writing the text, you don't have to worry about the logic in the login. In the login, the actual logic will be there. In the login, it will call this action, this locators and it will log in. It, you know, it will uh, give all the things like dot send keys and everything will be written under this login method. So this is the way in the page object model, we divide our test cases into two parts. One would be the page class and one would be the test class. So let me call this as test class. Test class package. Okay, so this is a test class package and this is our page class package. In this page class package, I have login page, home page class. In this test class package, I have login page test and the home page test. So as many pages which you have in your website, you can create a different uh, test class page and you know a page class pa uh, pages here. Okay, so this is the way you create a, a page object pattern. Now, beside this, what this page object pattern, what else it can create? So it may create a class to read the Excel file. Okay, because uh, let me call it Excel reader.java. Okay, so it can create a file which can read the Excel file because there may be a need that I have an Excel file. Okay, so this is an Excel file. There may be a need that, you know, I need the Excel file because when we are working on the page class or a page object, there are few things which my uh, I can read from the Excel as an input. I cannot directly code my data here in this code or in this code. If there is a need, I can read it from the Excel. So by calling this Excel reader utility, I can read the data from here or I can also read the data from here directly in the page test class. Okay, so this is one kind of a utility I can create. What other utilities I can create? So Excel is only one utility. I can create one property file also. Let me call it as config.prop. Okay, so what do we do in the config.prop? So in the config.prop, we give all those things through which my, you know, which through which my project is running the, the common things. For example, instead of giving URL uh, here in my base class, okay, I can call this URL which is stored in config.property. So in a key value pair, so I can give a key like URL equal to www.facebook.com. Okay, so wherever, you know, uh, like this is my URL, and let's assume this has been read my base class. Okay, here. Okay, so whenever uh, I need to open the URL, instead of directly typing www.facebook.com, I can read this property, I can get the URL. The another thing, you know, it can be, you know, you want to know in which language your website is open. Let's say it's ES or EN, okay, EN for English, ES for Spanish. On the basis of that, those kinds of configuration you can give here. There can be other things also for, let's say, what browser you want to run. So maybe you can give here like browser equal to Chrome. Okay, so these are all the things which you can keep in your config.property file. Okay, so this was one of the utility. We have created an Excel utility. We have created config utility. There can be other utility. For example, it can be, you know, for taking the screenshot and uh, you can give take screenshot okay so you can create one class and in that it can you know read the it can take the screenshot if you want to send an email you can create one method called send email okay like this so you can create a utility like this and uh, there can be one class which you can use for reporting because reporting is an important part if you're using test engine report that's fine but if you're not using a test engine report so either you can create your own custom report or you can create the extent report okay so for that you can create another 
class okay so see everything whatever we are doing here we are doing another package so we have a page class package in which you create all the pages we have a test class package in which we are creating all the packages we have a base class under you know our package and it might possible the package contains only one class so it doesn't matter it can have one or more than one also now we are creating a utility package in utility package we have excel reader uh, take screenshot config dot property so whatever you want to keep on the utility we can keep there normally config dot property is outside the utility so it has as you can have you know excel reader and the take screenshot for example and we can have uh, you know a class for red report extent it can be a different package so this is how all your page object pattern is created and if somebody asks you that beside this page object pattern what else do you need so what you can do let me just first remove this and I can show you Okay, let me just uh, remove. Okay, okay, I can type here. All right. So what else your page object pattern can create it? So just you know having these objects, uh, we can we would not be able to achieve everything. There should be some different third party things also which we need to go ahead and configure it. And in the interview, you can also say if somebody asks you, okay, this is the page object pattern, you draw them in front of them, that this is you will create a page object pattern. But what are the technologies you will use in that? So you can let them know so that you can you know you can use Java in that. You can use Selenium in that, Selenium web driver in that, and what else? You can use uh, test ng, okay, or maybe you can take. I will use JUnit or JBehave, whatever you want. If you if you know you have to do it into the BDD style, okay. And after that, uh, for the build tool, you can say you know I can do with the Maven or Gradle, whatever you want. All right. And uh, for reporting, you know, it can be your custom report or it can be the extent report. Okay, see for all those things, all these topics I have already covered in detail into my other videos. So you can look for that and you know, for reporting, you can have a log4j for the reporting part. For committing the code, either you can use GitHub or uh, Bitbucket. So everything I have already covered, which I am showing you here. Okay, so I, I hope that you have already seen that video. And for CI/CD, you can use Jenkins or Bamboo. Okay, so you can let them know that these are all the things you have to configure. And there's, you know, like there are few lines of code through which all these things can be configured in your in your framework. So it's a, not a big deal. And if you want to run parallelly, you know, you can use Grid in that. And uh, instead instead of git if you want to do it on the cloud maybe use a browser stack okay browser stack or a sauce lab okay so these are all the things which you can use sauce lab okay let me just give it sauce only okay so you can have a sauce lab and uh, what are the browsers which you're covering if you're covering like a chrome browser or safari browser so you have to mention that also so this is the way through which you know you have to configure everything here into your framework you have to create different pages for the page class you have to create a test pages for your test class uh, like we could give you have to give at the rate test here and all the complexity would be there into the page class but just to remember all the assertions which you do should be in your test class it should not be in the page class it is not a compulsion you can give into the page class also but as a practice it should be into the page class and both of these should you know uh, like extend some class some base class it can be two classes or it can be one class all up to your requirement how you do it you have to create certain utilities right now we have just created the excel reader but there can be you know a database reader also if you want you have to create some utility you have to set some property file also okay and uh, one thing i want to mention here uh, see for reading the data you can read the data through many ways one is through the excel reader so what happened that uh, let's say you have a requirement that you have to read certain data so that you can fill a form okay like a shipping address you have to 
you have to you know use a shipping address and you have to fill a shipping address there and it might possible in your test case you are filling the shipping address 10 or 20 times so it is not a good practice to write all the shipping address here directly in data it's always better we read through an excel reader we put all the shipping address in the excel we read through an excel reader so this is the way how it works now we can also give something in the property file but mostly in property file we give all the configuration which is required to run our project now there is one more property file which we can give and basically we call this property file as result.property okay result.property and what does it have it has certain keys for example if i show you on facebook there is a page given here and there is a text which says create an account so let's call this account header okay so when i'm creating a project i have to make sure whatever result i need to verify I can just give it into the account header. Where is my Eclipse? Wait a minute. Uh, okay, sorry. All right, so uh, I have to make sure that, you know, uh, wherever I am, you know, uh, reading any results, like on the Facebook page here, okay, like in create an account. So I can give my account header as in key. Okay, I can give a key and I will give it as account header, HEA. Or he okay and for that key there would be some value so what this value would be the value will be create an account okay so I will call it as create account okay so this is the one property file I need to create for English verification let's assume that your website is also in Spanish and you have to verify that so nothing what you have to do you will create another property file and its property file key will remain the same like account the okay key will remain the same account the and then you can give anything into the Spanish so for say you have to you know run your test cases into Spanish language what you need to do instead of en you just give a es here a configuration and on the basis of that configuration your property file get picked for example in the base course you have written some code here right so in the base class you have written some code to read the property file so what it will do on the basis of what you have given in your property file it will read it so there is no changes which you have to make in your in your pro in your code whenever you want to run into English you just type it in here and then run the project the base class will run this English one and whenever you want to run your uh, uh, results in the Spanish class what you need to do you have to just type ES the base class will run the Spanish property because basically what happened whenever you know their language get changed functionality remain the same login password and log clicking on login button going to the home page functionality remain absolutely same when they are different languages only the changes which has uh, which happens on the text which is showing on the website so why to hard code the text into our test it's always better to keep all those results in different property file and on the basis of this key and value which we read from the base we can just point to different files right and sometime you get the Spanish file from your client so if you don't know Spanish that's okay you get the Spanish file from your client you just have to put this property file here maybe you can get it in a property file or maybe in a kind of a requirement that what is a Spanish text is okay so this is all our framework basically this is the complete structure in the next video I will tell you that how to do it into Eclipse and then you can use that framework anywhere uh, in your company if you know you are creating a framework on the scratch you can use that framework which will create in the next video all right guys so this is one of the important topic just understand this uh, you know uh, this structure which I have told you if you want to listen this video again just listen this again understand the structure and then move forward this will definitely help you to achieve wonders when in your automation profile okay so thank you for watching this video if you like the video please like subscribe and share it with your friends also so that they it can help them all right thank you for watching